hey there guys and welcome back. On this week's show, it's part four of the new excavator build. Well, it's been a long time coming, but our track segments are finally done. They need a little bit of a final sanding, but that is no big deal. Now, if you've been following along, you should have something that looks like this. Now that you have all your treads glued in place and your track wheel guides glued in place. There are a couple more small pieces that we need to make in order to assemble the track segments. So... That's where we're gonna start with today's show. Well, the first pieces that we need to make are these base block front ends. And it is a very simple piece to make. It's so simple, in fact, that I really don't think I need a video of it. It's follow the radius here. We'll mark it out following these dimensions that they give here on the drawing. And about the only thing that might be a little trickier would be this taper here. Now. You can mount this onto a larger block of wood using double-sided tape and then use a belt sander if you wish, or you can just trim it up with a block plane. Either one would be just fine. As far as the radius goes, you can use your fret saw, coping saw, whatever you like, and then sand up to the line. So a very simple piece to make. The other piece that we need to make is even simpler. And that would be two of these roller wheel hubs. Um, they are nothing more than a one inch diameter dowel that is half an inch in length. And in the middle, it has a quarter inch diameter stopped hole that is three eighths of an inch deep. A very simple process, just cut a length of dowel. You can use your miter box to cut it and drill your hole. Mark the center of your dowel, drill your stopped hole, and those pieces are finished. So once we get those done, we can start getting into the assembly now of our track segments. Well, the first thing that we want to do for the assembly of these tracks is this one piece that we just made. We want to glue that onto the front. We will glue those in place, clamp them up, and let them completely dry. You want to check once you get them clamped that this edge here, right there, is square to the body of this. If not, make it square. In the meantime, while this stuff is drying, you can sand all of your track pieces. And there you go, that is those pieces glued in. Now, what you can do at this point if you want, if your profiles here don't exactly match, mine are a tiny bit off. What you can do is you can take that over to the belt sander or an oscillating drum sander and sand this so that it is perfectly mating with uh, each other. It's just a small little detail, but it'll really make a difference in your model. And hopefully you can see we're sanding those so that they are perfectly in line makes a huge difference. So at this point in time now, we need to attach these two pieces to this center piece. Now, this is where we run into a small issue with the plans. And let me take you over to them and I'll explain what I'm talking about. If we look right here at the exploded view of the plans, we can see that this center piece gets sandwiched between our two rails. However, there's no reference as to where it goes. There's no measurements here front to back as to where it connects. We don't see anything about this throughout the entire set of prints until we look at our cover page. And when we look at our cover page, it would appear that the bottom of our slope right there, hopefully you can see that, that lines up with the top crisp 90 degree corner right there. However, there is still no front to back measurements as to where to put this thing. So the best educated guess that I can come up with, and I've done some test fits and through experience and whatnot, I have decided that the front corner here of our rotating base, that will butt up against the edge of that base block front end. Now, 
That is why I had said to make sure that it's square. That way we get a nice joint between here, here, and the two sides. So what you want to do is you want to brace this centerpiece up with whatever, scrap material, whatever you have in order to get it to the proper height. And then once you get that done, you can apply glue to your two sides and clamp it together, checking for square and cleaning up all your squeeze out. Now, while we're waiting for that base to dry up, we can start assembling our track using those two inch long 332nd dowels. You will not glue this track together, believe it or not. The 332nd inch diameter dowels in the 332nd diameter holes in here should be just plenty to uh, keep everything in place once we get the tension on the track and it gets mounted. And at this point, after getting all the pins in, you should have two tracks that look something like this. So before you carry on any further, check your pieces to make sure that you're happy with the way they look at the joints. If there's any glue that you miss for the squeeze out, now is your opportunity to sand it out and to get it all clean fitting. So you can see how it looks at this point in time. And we're going to and start installing the pieces for our track. And the first piece that I want to install is this front roller wheel. Now on the plans, the pin, the front roller wheel pin that it calls for, it calls for um, one that is one inch long. And I did some test fitting and I don't like it. It doesn't leave enough material to go into our roller wheel hub. So I've actually extended this quarter inch dowel by 3 16 of an inch. And that seems to, at this point, it really seems to give us a good fit. It gives us plenty of material for the glue to bite on. And as well, um, it will allow our front wheel to turn just fine. So the first thing we're gonna do is in these end caps, just a little touch of glue. You don't need a lot. And we're going to uh, glue our dowel in place. And then from there, all you need to do is place your front wheel on here and then glue it in its home here in the front of our assembly. And before it has a chance to set, you can make your adjustments as far as allowing it to spin. Make sure that you're not going to stop it from spinning and make sure that there is no squeeze out that will glue it in place. That would be disastrous at this point in time. We're now going to install all of our roller wheels here. And what you want to do is place your roller wheel in the groove here that I had to deepen a little bit, place it in that dado, and you don't want to put any glue on the pin just yet. You want to push it through until your pin is pretty much, just see how it's poking out there and it's level? Then get in here with a small piece of dowel and place a little bit of glue around your pin and then push it through until it's equal on both sides. And then you can reach in there with a cotton swab and clean up the squeeze out. So get all of your center wheels now glued in place on both lengths of your track. And now the last two wheels to install will be your rear wheels here. So we're going to squeeze a little bit of glue here on the inside going to take a piece of dowel and just work that around in there. Make sure that we've got good coverage. Same on this side. And then what you want to do is place your wheel in place here. Come through from the outside. And then as you're placing it into the axle hole, rotate it. And that will help to coat the glue. You can also be ready with a cotton swab or a piece of cloth to clean up any of the glue that is squished out on the other side. Now for these roller guide wheels, all I've done is glued these little 1 8 
uh, thick wheels that we made earlier so that the dowels are flush with the ends and then you can scale off the drawing in order to get their placement. Um, once you get their placement, add a little bit of glue, glue them in place, make sure they're square and, uh, well, let them completely set up. And then the last thing to do here is to apply your track. Now you just want to make sure that you have your guide wheels running in between your track wheel guides and the track guides will run right in between these wheels here. Hopefully you can see that. So we'll just place them over top and then place a pin to join it together. And that is our tracks completed. Well, I have to admit, it was kind of a struggle to get those tracks on there. Um, they are on there now and they do work, but it's very tight. I'm not pleased with how tight that is. It shouldn't be that difficult. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to reduce the tension on these tracks. And the way that I'm going to do it is I'm going to carefully sand the diameter of each of the front and the rear wheels uh, down a little bit to give a little more flexibility in this track. My dry fit functioned much better than what this does here for some reason. I'm not sure what changed, but that's part of model building, that happens. Well, sometimes when it comes to model building, it's not about necessarily making the model so much as it is about problem solving. And what I have is a track that is too tight and I've put in too many hours to leave it like that. I'm not happy with it. So if you're not happy with it, don't accept it. So I want to make these end wheels here 1 16th of an inch smaller. And I've thought about this all week. It's been a week since I've touched this. So what I've done is I've set my calipers here to be 1 16th smaller than what this is. I've made up some new sanding blocks. Um, 180 grit sandpaper glued on to three quarter inch MDF. And the best thing I can think of, I didn't want to hand sand these because I want them to be uniformly round. That way the track will continue to turn. So what I've come up with, and it may seem a little barbaric, but I'm hoping it's gonna work, is I have this old sanding drum insert um, without the sandpaper, obviously. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the drill on and spin this wheel using the rubber drum insert and then apply this sandpaper down here until I get the size that I want. And hopefully um, that is going to reduce these wheels and give me the extra space I need to make the tracks run properly. And although it was time consuming, I believe it was worth it because our track now runs very smoothly on our vehicle. Um, in both directions. It runs very well. Now, truth be told, I only sanded down this round wheel at the back. I didn't do this cogged one. I did the first one and then tried it and the results were so-so, but I got the tension release on the track that I was looking for. From there, I noticed after really checking it out that right by this wheel, these sharp corners right here, these sharp corners are hooking on the track guides. On the bottom end, there is that dado that they can run in and they just go perfectly in there and they're fine. However, on the top end, there is no such animal. So I got in there with a file and I used some masking tape on the file to protect the wheel. And I just went around and rounded off all of these corners to give them a uniform look on both sides and that allowed it to stop catching as well and gave her a smoother operating track. So bottom line is don't settle. Um, I'm going to carry on with this side, get that side fixed up and then we can finally move on from this very time consuming track installation and build. And if you take your time and make your adjustments, you end up with a perfectly functioning track.
So the next piece that we're going to make will be these four step blocks. And for that, you're going to need some stock that is 5 16th of an inch wide. It is also 1 8th of an inch thick. Now these, believe it or not, are going to be made over here at the router table. And what I have is I have a 1 16th diameter straight bit installed here and I have a couple of stops installed. And these pieces here are going to be our steps. So what I've done is I've set the router table so that it will cut our outside 1 16th diameter slot. So all I'm going to do, because of the way I've set it up, this will be our start. So we'll hold this up against this block and then lower it down onto the spinning bit. From there, using a push stick, hold this end down and then feed it through until it hits this stop block on this side. Once it hits that, shut your router off. Let it finish spinning down. And then what you want to do is then turn this over and do it again on the other side. Then flip it and do the exact same thing. Run it through, flip, and then run it through. And you will end up with something that looks like this. You then want to raise your bit a little bit at a time, repeating the process until you get through slots on your pieces. And then I'll show you what to do when you get that finished. And now all that's left to do is use your miter box and cut these off to their final length. In this case, it'll be seven eighths of an inch long. Then we can just round these two corners on the front edges and that's it for these pieces. A light sanding and you're done. Uh, then we can install these on our track sections. Well, the next piece that I want to make will be these rotating base bottom tabs. They're very simple pieces to make. I will just take some 1 8 thick material and rip it to a width of 7 8 of an inch. From there, just mark your center using the dimensions on the plan. You can drill your 3 16 diameter hole. And this profile here at the top, that will be obtained by cutting it over at the scroll saw. Some light sanding and we can uh, glue these two pieces in place on our base. Being sure to use a square to make sure that they look absolutely perfect. Well, at this point, we are going to skip ahead to sheet four of our drawings. And the reason for that is this is the base of our excavator. This is the lower sections. We can see the exploded uh, view here and the uh, deck subassembly right here. But these are the pieces we need. Now, I don't have to go into huge explanations about these because they're rather simple pieces. But for starters, what you can do is follow your dimensions here for the main pieces, the middle deck, the left side deck, and the right side deck, and just cut them at the table saw so that you have your basic pieces cut. We can deal with the rest of the shaping in just a little bit. We're gonna do the exact same thing for this deck inside panel, number one, and number two, the deck lower support, anything that is just a simple square piece. This middle deck block number two, it's a simple square. It's one and three quarters by 11 sixteenths by a quarter inch thick. You don't need explanations on how to cut square blocks, but one piece of advice I will give you, if you're doing a rip cut, please, use a rip blade. If you're doing a cross cut, use a cross cut blade and you will find that your quality of woodworking, your quality of cuts will be 10 times better. So we will get all of these little pieces here that are basically squares or rectangles cut and then we can move on. And you can do the same thing over on sheet five for the boom arm base support, which is also part of this lower assembly. And unfortunately, that's all the time that we have again for this week. Um, guys, you have to remember here that when it comes to something like those tracks, you really need to take your time. You need to be satisfied with it before you can move on. 
um, the adjustment there of shrinking those wheels by 1 16th and then the filing and the the shaping of the ends of those rails to get the, the tracks to run properly that was something like a three hour just over three hour process and there was nothing to show for it other than smooth running tracks visually it looked like nothing and that's where you can get discouraged you spend three hours on a project and you look at it and there's been absolutely nothing that looks different but what you have to realize is you have a functioning amazing looking track and if you took three hours to fine tune it and get it to be to that point then so be it you're not in a rush as soon as you start getting in a rush that's when you're going to start compromising that's when you're going to accept things that normally wouldn't be acceptable and at that point in time you really really will never be satisfied with any of these models that you make so take your time understand that it's a time consuming process Put on some music and enjoy the process and sit there and fine tune and check it out and look and see what's hooking, what's, what's grabbing, what's making it so that it's not turning correctly. Is it a tension issue? Is it, in my case, a shaping issue? What is it? Figure that out. Problem solving is a huge part of these models and uh, honestly, I hope you embrace that and take it on. Guys, I want to thank you so much for tuning in this week. If you haven't already, please consider liking and subscribing to the channel. We have a load of fun here every Tuesdays and Fridays, and I hope that you'll consider becoming a part of that audience. Guys, I want to thank you so much for tuning in today. I hope you've enjoyed today's episode. It's been a lot of fun, a lot of work for me, but I hope you're going to try this for yourself. I hope you've enjoyed it. And more importantly, guys, I hope you're going to join me again next week when I bring you yet another woodworking video.